Hello and welcome to The Painting Elephant. This is the first episode in a series of podcasts about elephants that paint. Hello and welcome. Did you know that elephants actually started painting in the 1930s as a part of a circus act? Most elephant paintings at this time were drawn using pencils and it was only until 1940 that elephants started painting at zoos. The first painting that was done at a zoo was in 1940 in New York. Later on, a couple of conceptual artists, Comar and Melamine, began working with the elephants in US zoos. That was in 1955, and it was only until around about 1977 that elephants started painting in Thailand. The first camp did its paintings in 1977, and the elephants proved to be very quick at learning how to paint. So since then, there have been quite a variety of different styles of paintings done by the elephants throughout Thailand in different elephant parks and conservation centres. So to begin with this podcast, we'll just go into the background of elephants as an animal that works because elephants weren't initially brought into captivity to paint. This happened much later. So we'll go into the history of how the elephants actually ended up in elephant parks and elephant conservation centres and why they actually began painting. So we'll get into that right now because it's quite a serious subject. There's a lot of contention as to elephants kept in captivity and even more so about the elephants actually painting, whether it's good or not, whether it's cruel whether it should be even done at all. So we will discuss the history of the elephant and why they actually ended up in nature parks. So, you know, to cut a long story short and and keep it simple, many decades ago, elephants were considered by Thais, and and not only Thais, by people in Asia where elephants live, and they considered them as a working animal or a beast of burden, so to speak. And they were used for various types of work, such as logging. They were actually used as a method of transportation. They would put a special seat on the elephant's back and they could sit there and they could be carried around from place to place. But the major type of work, particularly in Thailand, that the elephant was used for was for logging. The logging industry in its heyday used a lot of elephants to to drag and haul the logs from A to B. This kind of work was fairly trying on the elephants, so much so that a couple of decades ago, the Thai government banned the use of elephants in the logging industry. So what happened was there was no work for the elephants now. There was nowhere to really keep them anymore and they could not be released back into the wild because they were like semi-domesticated now. They relied upon humans for their food. Due to the diminishing habitat, they also had the problem that if they did just release them back into the wild and left the elephant on its own, that it would ultimately infringe upon villages and areas that have been used for cropping by local farmers. This pose and still does occur to this day that the elephants in their search for food actually end up encroaching upon human settlements and this causes strife because they wreak havoc in these areas, they destroy the the local crops that the villagers plant and the villager wants to protect his livelihood and In doing so, sometimes he gets injured or even killed by the elephant. Now, the elephants are only looking for food. They can become distraught and stressed if they're hungry and they're looking for food and then they get startled by someone who's trying to force them out of the area, which is used for farming. So the villagers can actually be quite seriously injured and killed. The elephants too have on occasions been killed. Now the elephant is a revered animal in Thailand, but still that's not going to prevent them from being injured, maimed or even killed when it comes down to a farmer trying to support his family. And if he's attacked by an elephant, well you know, he's going to do what he can to protect himself. So the elephants, instead of being just released back into the wild, 
because there were like hundreds of elephants and maybe even thousands of elephants uh, that were used in this industry. They were allowed to be sent to various elephant parks and conservation centres. Now, to maintain an elephant is no easy thing. They eat hundreds of kilograms of sugarcane and bananas every day. And they can't obtain these things in, in the wild anymore because the areas are just too small. And the elephants that are being looked after are, are so many. So that something had to be done. And the way that this problem was addressed was that they, through regulation and government ruling, the elephants were sent to various parks. And then the park owner would run a commercial business. He would gear it up for tourism. So a lot of the income that these park owners generate is from tourism. And to make it interesting for the tourists, they introduced elephant painting as part of an elephant show. They would do various things like show you what they used to do in the past when the logging was in full swing. But they would only just drag a log around for, you know, 20, 30 metres and then roll it up onto a bunch of logs. So it wasn't really being cruel to the elephant in any way because that in comparison to actually assisting with the dragging of hundreds of logs through, through dense jungle is a very minor uh, act to perform just to drag a log a few metres and pile it up uh, on some other logs. And then they would play musical instruments like the harmonica and play the drums and then do some paintings. And then they would have the uh, elephant rides where the tourists would actually sit on top on the elephant's back. They'd be on a special seating arrangement so that they wouldn't fall off the elephant and get injured. And then they would go for a bit of a walk in the jungle on the elephant's back. The elephant would wade through some water of a local river and then perhaps go around to a local hill tribe village. So they would get to see a few interesting things on the elephant trek. There are other treks which go for a few hours, maybe a day or two, where they do actually spend time with the mahout and go into deeper into the jungle. And that's more for a person who wants a bit of an adventure. But the actual elephant paintings are done in a very controlled way. The elephants uh, only do a few paintings per day and during times when it gets very, very hot, they don't even paint at all. The elephants are rotated in their painting activities so that they don't get bored, they do other things. So there is a lot of misconception about elephant paintings, why they're actually done, whether it's cruel and whether it should actually be done or not. We'll cover this in later podcasts, but I just wanted to give you a rundown of where the elephants were, the kind of work they did, where they are now, and what the future is for the elephants, why they are in parks and why the paintings are done. And you would expect that with something like this, as controversial as this, there's gonna be some groups which oppose the elephants being kept in captivity and opposed to elephant paintings in any kind of shape or form. So we'll discuss that in the next podcast. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us in this first podcast that we've done and we hope to give you more information, accurate information, so that you can make your own decision as to whether this industry is one that should be continued or not. So thank you very much and see you in the next podcast. Have a good day. Bye for now.